Welcome, welcome to United Way's Community Talk. I'm Jenna Gullo. I'm a little hoarse from the festivities last night, the best day of the year, Halloween. Uh, it was exciting. It was fun. And I'm carrying on the tradition of my grandparents of giving away the big candy bars. Had over 337. I quit counting after that. Trick-or-treaters come to my door. It was it's just a great, great night all around, but I apologize. I'm going to be leaning on my co-host today, Nicole Pesky, our marketing manager at United Way, to be doing most of the interviewing because I don't know when I'm going to have a voice and when I'm not. And it's from screaming, of course, last night, <laughs> trying to scare all the little kids. Yeah, it's a good night to do that, right? Yeah. The only, way you, the only night you can do that and you don't freak your neighbors out. Oh, no, I'm pretty sure I still freaked my neighbors out. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard your. I have. I've heard that your house is legendary. I. That's a direct I quote. Actually, legendary. Who who said that by the way? Because I'm pretty <laughs> impressed that there are some people. You know what I loved hearing them kids walking out the door saying, "This is the best house." <laughs> That's great. Uh, and then I got out of character and I said, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> right before you started screaming again. <laughs> but no, it is really cute. And um, a lot of the kids really were too afraid to come to my doorstep, which is good because they've got to work up to it. You know, you yeah. got to have that one house in the community. That's right. right? Yeah. That's that will haunt their nightmares forever and ever That's hilarious so you're the reason for sleepless nights for parents last night oh wait i don't think we want to go that far yeah. <laughs> oh well at least you didn't have all that extra candy sitting around your house no i ran out and then thank goodness my wonderful um cohort amber jensen oh Ruzhishka is her new married uh -huh. name ran out and got more yeah i have like way too much candy sitting around my house. You know, somebody was telling me this morning, though, that apparently, actually, somebody was telling me that that you can, some dentists will send candy overseas to the troops. You, oh. So you can drop. So after your kids go to bed, you can take half their candy <laughs> <laughs> and give it to your dentist. What an unlikely place. <laughs> So. Yeah, you would think all the dentists would want the kids to, you know, be needing their dental services. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but not the good dentist, like right. Dr. Warford. He is in studio giggling away at us. Saying, I know. What in the world did I agree the to poor guy do today? Probably wants to defend himself. But, so. Let's just hope Vern isn't tuning in from the car ride over from NASC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but no, we have we have an incredible show with you. Uh, after the break, we're going to have Dr. Warford, uh, the past mayor, and the, gosh, I don't even know, is he the business... What's your dean, title? right? You're the dean mm -hmm. of the School of Business out at University of Mary. So that's exciting. It and is then exciting. towards the end of the show, we're going to be talking with Vern Dosh from NASC. I know. It's a huge show. Yeah, I love it. Talking about leadership. So. I know. And, and Vern wrote a book, Wired Differently, which mm -hmm. he's now teaching a course out at the University of Mariana. Right. Big which is hit. great. I mean, if every student and business member could be leaders like Dr. Warford and Vern Dosh. When right. in our place, just be a better, better community, right. better world to live in. Yep. I love uh, it. So, Nicole, you have to help me out here. Uh, we just wrapped up Coins for a Cause. Yeah. It was and as huge. we're talking about education and getting, you know, developing our leaders of tomorrow, we were raising spare change for a really good cause. Yes, it was a super fun event. So we send home the Ziploc bags with uh, the kids in the Bismarck school system. We had 20 schools participating this year and together they raised over $12,000 to go to the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. It's just fantastic because the Dolly Parton Imagination Library is a program that we run and it's op open for any income level for people to sign up. And so your child will receive a free book in the mail every single month until they're five years old. Yeah, so, I mean, people can sign up on our website, msaunitedway.org. I think my favorite part of this program is I think when I was, you know, a mom using this program, I thought, oh, how awesome, I get a free book every month for my kids. But what I didn't realize is that the amazing benefit of this program goes to our low-income families um, in our community because there's a lot of kids out there. Um, they say that kids who live in poverty don't have kids' books in their homes, and so this program aims to put them there. 
Well, and a lot of times they don't have transportation or a means to get to the library. I mean, we right. have an incredible public library, but if their parents are working or, you know, they're they're not able to get there and enjoy the benefits of it. And in fact, I got a phone call today um, asking me to take in a six-year-old and a 10-month-year-old. Oh, my goodness. From a homeless family. Wow. And so social services wants to work with the mother and get her back up on her feet again. And here you have this 10-month-old who Lord knows where, you know, she and her six-year-old sister was sleeping. And, you know, what happens is when kids are homeless, they are not going to be able to get to school, Mm. you know. And so she's been missing a lot of school this year. And um, actually, people are so incredibly generous because I Mm. wondered if any of my friends had a pack and play or Mm. crib and numerous people on Facebook immediately raised their hand and said, yes, I can help out. You know, you can have mine. I'd give it to you. And mm. It's just amazing how people come together and and want to be a part of the solution. Right. We should probably, you signed up for the program just for your foster kids. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's a really good idea. I know. Yeah. For 10 month old. Yeah. So anyway, it was amazing. I mean, we had a really great turnout for Coins for a Cause. And so it's fun because they do this competition. There's this, they do uh, most dollars raised per student, and then they do the most overall raised. And there's a traveling trophy, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So traveling trophy. And so this year, the most dollars per student went to Prairie Rose Elementary, and the most raised overall went to Sunrise, and then out of the high school competition, um, Bismarck High had the most raised. Yeah, so it's pretty neat. I love when kids get to be a part of making a difference. And I mean, everybody can find a penny, (laughs) you know, and how in the impact that it has. It's only $25 to sponsor a child for the entire year, Mm -hmm. a year's worth of uh, books for these little kiddos. Mm-hmm. Pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is. So this week is 96 Hours of Caring. A special thank you to Town Square Media. They partner with us every year. And if people want to be a part of this, we're going to be at CashWise uh, today through the 4th. You can donate food for our local food pantries, for our United Way Backpack Program. And if you'd like to sponsor children in the United Way Backpack Program or help to stop hunger in our community, you can go online to msaunitedway.org. Right. Yep, exactly. So head on over there and, and do what you can. So um, in addition to Bismarck, uh, the Bismarck Senior Center, they're actually selling pies for uh, to benefit United Way as part of their campaign. So if anybody's interested in not baking for Thanksgiving this year, $8 is all it takes to get a delicious pumpkin or an apple pie. So you can call over to the Bismarck Senior Center, and that's 255-4648. Um, to order pie. <clears throat> I fully great. plan on ordering a pie, and then I am going to pass it off as my own so that my mother-in-law thinks I'm a great baker. Good plan, Nicole. <laughs> hey, listen, we are going to be back. We're going to be talking with Dr. Warford. Join us in just a couple minutes. Currently, it's 44. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. Welcome back. You're listening to United Ways Community Talk. I'm Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director of the Missouri Slope Area-wide United Way. And co-hosting with me today is Ms. Nicole Pesky, the Marketing Manager at United Way. Hey, happy to be here. Thanks for putting together an incredible show for us. We have Dr. Warford that we're going to be talking to in just a couple minutes here. And then we're going to have Vern Dosh. Right. Live in studio. I know. I love the topic. I just feel like we're so blessed in Bismarck Mandan to such have such amazing leaders. I mean, in all different areas. So happy to have these these folks on today. We we really are excited. Uh, before we get to that, we just have to mention as you begin your holiday shopping. Please go on to smile.amazon.com because then you choose United Way as your charity and we receive a percentage of every purchase that you make. Right, yeah. This seems to me like this is a good a good reason to not feel guilty about your online shopping. (laughs) Shop on Amazon. You look at life. You have such a great way. Oh, a great outlook, Nicole Pesky. <laughs> I love it. Uh, and then just a reminder to all of our partners out there, when we're talking about the United Way campaign, United Way has a four out of four stars on GuideStar. GuideStar. Yeah, I love this. Um, so, well, it's 
this cha- charity navigator. So they're the largest and most well-respected nonprofit eval- profit evaluator. So they give out designations and charities are rated in areas like efficiency growth, revenue growth, administrative expenses, and other areas. And then they give out these star designations. And so we received the highest honor, which is four stars. And they say that only one in four charities receives that four star rating. So um, it's a pretty amazing, um, amazing honor. Yeah, and we have a gold star rating on GuideStar, a four out of four on Charity Navigator. So when you're looking at giving this holiday season and making the biggest bang for your buck, it's United Way. It's our local United Way. All the decisions are made by your local volunteers and board of directors. So we appreciate we appreciate your support. So, you know, part of what's important to us at United Way is transparency, right? Uh, and making sure that we're not just responsive to needs, but proactive uh, in addressing them. And I can't think of a better leader who's demonstrated that, who's really made tough decisions, who has um, stood by his convictions, who's been a great leader representing the people of Bismarck, uh, the past mayor of Bismarck, Dr. Warford. Thanks for being here. Hey, glad to be here. Uh, um, Happy to be on on board today. You know, Dr. Warford, talk to our listeners. Give them a little... uh, uh, give them, give them your bio, because I remember first meeting with you because you agreed to lead our education division at the campaign cabinet for our United Way campaign this year. And I was amazed at just everything that you've done in your career at your very young age. Well, it's uh, not necessarily about me. Of course, my, my greatest legacy is uh, my marriage to Jenny and our four kids and our 12 grandchildren. That's kind of the center of wow. my life now. How long have you been married? I've been married 45 years. No. Wow. So, yes. Oh, you you must have been a baby. Yes, uh, <laughs> I, I certainly was. And, you know, Jenny and I came to Bismarck, uh, Mandan area, in 1973, and I started work for orthodontics. So I practiced uh, orthodontics. Um, I, I was joking with uh, Monsignor Shea. I practiced orthodontics longer than Monsignor's been alive. Uh, and, um, you know, from there, you know, and I, I still practice on a part-time basis because, you know, that's uh, really a, a part of me. I went through some uh, dental political things, got involved in uh, real politics and, uh, you know, served the city. Uh, I was just humbled to be elected three times uh, Served the city during uh, probably the largest uh, growth in the history of our city. We had a couple of floods to deal with and a lot of other issues. And I think you know Bismarck was a better place uh, when we got done. I'm involved in the cattle business, in, in cattle ranching as well. I've done some entrepreneurial businesses. Uh, and uh, right now, I'm really honored to uh, lead the school of business out at the University of Mary. Uh, Monsignor tapped me on the shoulder in 2014. And I've uh, been there, and it's uh, it's such a great organization at the University of Mary to be involved with. So it's it's very exciting. Wow, a man of many lives. I've got to ask you, what motivated you to become or to run for mayor? Because that's got to be one of the toughest jobs. You know, it uh, it kind of goes back to maybe the same things, the same uh, differentiating decisions that I made to go out to the University of Mary and. Uh, uh, I have always wanted to be a servant leader, and uh, a servant leader, uh, I knew uh, Sister Thomas at that time, and she promoted servant leadership, which is serving others, giving back to the community. And as a small business owner in the community, and just you know seeing all the kids, and just how the community supported our orthodontic practice, I felt that uh, you know when a group of business people tapped me on the shoulder in 2001 and said, hey, we uh, would like you to consider uh, you know running for mayor, Uh, I thought it would be a great way for me to give back to the community. And so uh, it it really is. It's uh, uh, you have to put your heart and soul into it, uh, make the best decisions, uh, always uh, knowing that you're representing the citizens and not necessarily your personal interests. And I think that way, you know, you have, you know, the idea of servant leadership. And so I think that was my motivation. Dr. Warford, Mm -hmm. you're talking about um, servant leadership, and I know that that's been increasingly um, big for the University of Mary. Can you talk a little bit about what you see the difference being between you know, like more traditional leadership and ser- what servant leadership is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everybody is talking about leadership. And, and, and leadership, uh, 
without having that servant leadership component. And then we also were kind of segueing into what we call virtuous leadership. I could maybe talk a little bit about that. Uh, but but leadership is um, it, it's a little bit more, in my opinion, one-dimensional. Leadership is having great trust um, in your team and in your leaders. Uh, that trust is two components, and at least in my mind, it's competence in what you do uh, and your character. In a breakdown in either of this competence or character, uh, then you have a failure in leadership. Servant leadership is much more than that. It's it's leadership, but then it is you know looking at your community, looking at your family, looking at others, and serving others, giving back to the community. Uh, virtuous leadership, uh, which is our new initiative uh, at the University of Mary, it kind of takes servant leadership to that next level. And uh, virtuous leadership to me is bringing out best the best in others, uh, bringing out the best in your team, bringing out the best in your family, your coworkers, or whatever endeavor you're in. And it also has a com- component that you need to bring out the best in yourself. Be a constant student, um, you know, have character, and so forth. With a great big asterisk, um, if you bring out the best in yourself, you got to be humble. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we, those are the things that we're, we're teaching at the Gary Thorlson School of Business at the University of Mary, where, uh, you know, everybody is teaching and talking leadership. Everybody's teaching accounting, HR, marketing, uh, sports and leisure management, you know, all the other, uh, all the things that we teach there. But we're trying to instill in our students um, this servant leadership, giving back to the community, you know, having morals, uh, moral courage to make the right decisions. My, my, my line out at the university is business should be a force of good. And uh, so that's uh, what we're trying to teach to our students. And so how are you at University of Mary being able to give students all of these opportunities and be active leaders? You know, give them real hands-on experience. Absolutely. I think that, uh, you, know, you know, every one of our faculty um, um, have that. And so the idea of a servant and virtuous leadership is instilled in what they hear on a daily basis. But then I think it's, you know, getting out in the community. Um, just a few weeks ago, we had our day of service. The entire university was dismissed. And I think we had uh, 1,200 students all giving back to Bismarck and Mandan in various ways. And, uh, uh, you know, leading by the, that example, uh, it is a student-led initiative. Uh, that's just one specific example on how we take and where the rubber really meets the road. You can talk the talk, but we actually walk the walk at University of Mary uh, in doing that. And just all, all across the board, uh, you know, our support at the University of Mary of United Way. You know, that's uh, extraordinarily important to us uh, as well because of the great things that this charity does. What advice would you give to young leaders today? Um, my, my advice to them is that, um, you, know, you, you know, success doesn't come from luck. Uh, luck is, uh, you know, when you uh, are playing cards or you're shaking dice. Uh, uh, luck to me is you have to create your own luck in this world, and that is uh, when you have to prepare yourself to meet the opportunity. So luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So you prepare yourself at the University of Mary uh, so that when the opportunities arise, that you can create this luck and create these opportunities for you to, uh, you can soar um, in your own personal passions uh, in, in, and in the uh, field that you choose to be in. Dr. Warford, talk to us as we head out to our next segment here. I about the growth, incredible growth out at University of Mary. Absolutely, in higher ed, not many uh, schools are growing. We are growing. We've got building projects, and hey, you, you go out there, and there's orange cones and yellow ribbon all over the place because we've got three major building projects, our, our campus center, our new field house, and then our new dorm. Uh, that is uh, in a direct proportion to our growth in the number of students that are out there. I want to talk about a really, really great answer uh, for students that are, are listening, and that is, is how would you like to go to four years of college, end up with a bachelor's and a master's degree? Uh, think of that. Think of uh, you know showing fiduciary responsibility with your tuition dollars. Uh, and we have what's known as year-round campus. Uh, and that is, if you know what you want to do when you hit the ground running at the University of Mary, and uh, you know, when you, you show up at the University of Mary, you've won the lottery of your life, in my opinion. So you've won that lottery. If you know what you're doing and you stay on task and you're willing to go year-round, uh, you will end up four years with a master's degree. 
and your bachelor's degree, think of how you differentiate yourself out in the workforce. Think of how you can contribute to organizations like the United Way or to whatever endeavor that you want to. So uh, I I think those would be really innovative things that we're doing to um, answer to that question, you know, the high cost of higher ed, is it worth it? Uh, You know, how can I be a contributing member of society, a servant leader, uh, go through your own year on campus, graduate with a master's degree, and then uh, give back to your community. And living the values out at University of Mary, uh, I was going to call you Mayor Warford, <laughs> Dr. Warford, thanks for giving of your leadership and your heart to so many students out at the university and to our community for decades. Well, thank you so much. You know, it's uh, the, the young people at the university and our citizens, uh, they're, they're our future. And, uh, you know, we, we all have to contribute uh, to the best of our ability. So thank you. We are blessed to have you. Join us in just a couple minutes. We are going to be talking with CEO of NISC, Vern Dosh. Currently, it's 44. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. You are listening to United Way's Community Talk I am your host today, Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director of the Missouri Slope Area-Wide United Way, and co-hosting with me is the Marketing Manager at United Way, Nicole Pesky. Oh, I love this <laughs> show today. I'm so excited about it. Oh, I know. It's great. I just loved it? what he had to say about servant leadership and, and what they're doing for the students out at the University of Mary. It's such an honor for me to be able to get to work with some of our top leadership in our community through United Way and meeting Dr. Warford. I had known him and, mm-hmm. you know, of course, he has been a supporter of our community and does some great work in making sure that people are taken care of. You know, but I didn't know him on a real personal level until this year when he joined the campaign cabinet through United Way. And it's just been such a pleasure being able to model after these wonderful examples in our community. As I look across the studio at another (laughs) such fine example, Mr. Vern Dosh. Oh, Jenny, you make me blush. <laughs> I'm not kidding, though. I really, I think that's one of one of the many best aspects of working at United Way is being able to get to know people like you, Vern, on, mm. you know, on more than just a, a business level to really, you know, you've hosted United Way events at your home and your wife, Lynn, is just an amazing woman as well. And you really, you do such a good job at just living your values, not just at work, but, you know, in in life and every interaction you have with people. Well, Jenna, and what I would say about that, and thank you for those kind words. It's true. But, One of the main reasons that I'm so passionate about United Way and that I believe in what you're doing is because I believe in you. And and I see you living that out in your life. And so I look at that and I say, you know, that's something I can get behind. Oh, Vern, thank you. That means so much to me. Well, it's heartfelt. It really does. No, I appreciate that. Uh, You know, and and you chaired our United Way campaign a couple years ago, probably when you were way too busy with your travel schedule. I mean, and you do not back away from from those types of big requests that, that people come to you with. And now you're leading the Catholic School Initiative. That's huge. Yeah, you know, huge. I'm, I'm at a place in my life where you kind of look over your shoulders and you realize how fortunate that we've been to grow up in this community and grow up in the school system that we have and have agencies like United Way to take care of our people, right? And, and so you realize how fortunate we've been and how blessed we've been. And you say, you know, this is a time in my life where I really need to give back. And everybody's busy, you know, but you, you make time and you establish priorities for those things that you really believe in. And, and education of our young people, you know, economic development of our community, and then United Way to provide for um, for our people, some of whom have, haven't had the same kind of breaks. And, and so we have a responsibility to do that. And for me, it's a joy and it's a pleasure. And, and it's, it's one of the best things that I get to do is, is to be involved with the likes of United Way. Thanks. Thanks, Vern, for stepping up and, and 
not just talking about the needs, but being a, playing an active role in meeting those needs. You know, how do you keep it all straight? I mean, you you travel so much. You're between here and St. Louis for NASC. Uh, you you started to teach a course out at U Mary. You wrote a book. I mean, how does that happen? You, you know, <laughs> he doesn't. Do rem- you sleep? He doesn't remember. <laughs> Do you sleep? I, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I I think part of it is you know I mean let's be clear. My my home life is my priority and. And to have a wife that supports me and forgives me and covers for me when I'm running around doing some of those things um, is, I think, is the first part of it. Mm. The other thing is, you know, the organization that I work for, NISC, I, I couldn't be more fortunate in that I've, I've had an opportunity to do things that I love to do, which is technology and, and watch and be a part of growing a business and, and watch and be a part of mentoring young people that come into our organizations and that grow into leadership positions. It's really cool to watch that, really fulfilling to watch that. But, you know, I I've, I've, am surrounded by really good people that give me the opportunity to, to do some of these things in the community. And, you know, I think there was a time for NISC when we, we had a very small number of people, employees, and as that has grown over the years, I mean, for us, we've really come to understand the corporate responsibility we have to give back in this community. And so part of what I get to do is, is to be involved with United Way. I mean, we, we consider that to be part of our responsibility. And, and so I have the flexibility to do some of those things because I work with really great people that have my back and, and are taking care of business when, when I can help give back to the community, too. You know, you do have a lot of very <clears throat> brilliant people that work for you. I mean, Carrie Riker, she's just mm-hmm. got a heart of gold leading the United Way campaign year after year. Uh, John Weber has been on our Community Impact Committee, now chairing that committee. Jasper is just taking the bull by the... Yeah. Rains? I don't know how you... What, I think it's it? horns. Horns? I don't know. I'm not from North Dakota. <laughs> the, rain, the rains, too. <laughs> yeah. I go to rodeos, though. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you empower these young leaders? I, I think, you know, the philosophy, Jenna, is you hire based on character. Mm-hmm. And, and the rest, we're willing to grow those employees. I mean, when, when you think about it, and, and you mentioned Carrie. I mean, Carrie had the opportunity to get a great education from a great school. She's a lawyer. Yeah. And, and we tapped her on the shoulder. I mean, she was an assistant general counsel at NISC taking care of contracts and things like that. And that's all really important mm-hmm. for us. But we tapped her on the shoulder and said, you know, Carrie, we, we think that there's a place for you in our organization to take care of our employees, to be the keeper of our culture. And, and, and I think you can relate to our employees very well, perhaps better than I can sometimes. I need you, Carrie. I need you in that role. And, and, and she was like, I don't have any training in that. I don't have my SPHR credential mm-hmm. and all that. And I said, you know, we can grow you into that. We're going to be very patient. We're going to, we're going to make an investment in you. And, um, and it's, it's been a wonderful left turn in her career. I don't think in a hundred years she ever expected when she was going to school and getting her degree in that, that she would someday be heading up people services, HR for 1200 employees, wow. you know, and, and she does a marvelous job. And Jenna, that is, that's one of the best parts of my job mm-hmm. is to watch the likes of, of, uh, of a Carrie and, uh, and a Jasper and a Brian Verdow and a John mm, Weber Brian. and a Mike Weber. I mean, go on and on mm-hmm. of the, the great people that, that have grown up with that organization. Hmm. It's pretty neat. So we've talked, you know, with Dr. Warford about servant leadership. And you're really the epitome of a servant leader. You wrote a book called Wired Differently. Does it have a lot of those servant leadership values in it? It does. I would say servant leadership is one of the basic premises of that book. And to be honest with you, that isn't, that isn't my concept. I mean, that was like 1984 
and Sister Thomas Welder at the University of Mary that first introduced us to that and planted that seed. Really? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Wow. Really. It doesn't Were surprise you born me. Then? <laughs> I, <wasn't born. laughs> I was. <laughs> but no, that really That doesn't surprise me though. With that Sister Thomas is yep. the one that first introduced it. And and huh. what we came to understand is, you know, CEOs generally have about a 30% approval rating. It's kind of pathetic. They have not, you know, perhaps my generation has not behaved very well in being good stewards of those management responsibilities. And, and you've seen the likes of, you know, mm-hmm. and I won't name names, but people carted off um, for acting badly and, and not being good stewards of the, those businesses or the employees that, uh, that they work with. And I, you know, we've really come to understand that in our organization, and perhaps it isn't, doesn't work in every, but in our organization, you know, we say to the leaders, look, you know, if, if you want to be a good leader here, you have to learn to serve. You have to lead by example. You, you know, you have to serve those employees. Jenna, I know in our organization, there's a lot of people that are a lot more talented, a lot smarter than I am. Hmm. But if I don't, I don't if I don't create <laughs> if I don't create if we don't create an environment that allows them to grow and and that they can feel confident that we're being honest maybe not 100% effective all the time we don't necessarily make all the right decisions all the time but our heart is in the right place and and so work with us mm-hmm. as as we work to build this company and that whole concept of of servant leadership again I give credit to sister Thomas for that that first notion um, has been incredibly important in the culture of our organization. Vern, can you stick around so we can talk more about Wired sure. Differently? Sure. All right. We will be back in just a couple minutes here on United Way's Community Talk. Currently, it's 45. The Red River Farm Network. Ag News is here on Super Talk 1270. Welcome back. You are listening to United Way's Community Talk. I'm Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director of the Missouri Slope Area-Wide United Way, asking you if you need some Thanksgiving pies that you don't want to bake yourself. If so, the Bismarck Senior Center is selling apple or pumpkin pies, and it's to benefit the United Way campaign. Call 255-4648. And I know Nicole Pesky, my co-host today and marketing manager at United Way, is going to get on the horn and place some orders. That's right. <laughs> Can't go wrong with pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and it's a great way to treat your clients, too. You know, if any business folks are listening out there and you, you want to give a nice little gift before Thanksgiving and say thank you, call up idea. the Senior Center. They sold out last year. <gasps> and they were delicious. Wow. Delicious. Uh, and then just another quick reminder to everyone driving off to lunch today, go on to smile.amazon.com. You can select United Way, MSA United Way as your charity. And we get a, a percentage of the proceeds off of every gift purchase. I like that too, because when you go on to smile, Amazon smile, you can select your charity of choice. So MSA United Way. And then if you accidentally forget and you go to the regular Amazon, a box pops up and it says, hey, if you go to Amazon Smile, a portion of it can go to MSA United Way. That didn't so I love seem, that. Yeah, well, it didn't seem to help my boyfriend for the first 25 times. I'd say, did you, <laughs> did you go to Smile? Did you go to Smile? <laughs> he's got to go pick. Yeah. <laughs> we know who he's picking, but he's still got to pick. <laughs> well, and you only have to pick it once, and then you go right, on to Smile right. the rest of the time, and it's automatic. Yeah, super easy. Yeah. So when you get all your household supplies, whatever you need, yeah. go to Smile. We get money. It stays in your local community. Everybody wins. Uh, we have had a great show today. We had Dr. Warford from the University of Mary's School of Business on, and we were just talking with Vern Dosh, CEO of NISC and author of Wired Differently, and he agreed to stay here with us. I can't believe that, I know. I love- <laughs> that we didn't scare him away. I love the show. Can I ask the first question? You got so it, I, I talked. I noticed that several times that um, you, Vern, that you talked about building up um, young employees, especially you know employees that you are seeing something in. And I just think that NISC has such a fantastic reputation among young professionals. I really, I think it's a very sought after company to work for. And so I'm just wondering, what do you feel is different about NISC? Well, we're wired differently. <laughs> <laughs> Good nice. segue. No. I like yeah, it. Very quick-witted. You know, to be, to be honest with you, um, 
When, when you look at this group of employees, uh, the average age is 34 years old. Wow. wow. So there's a lot of young employees, and probably 80% of the employees that we hire are right out of the university system. So Carrie Reichert and her group of recruiters are you know, spread out over about 16 college campuses. And so a lot of the new employees we get are young. You know, I mean, mm. sometimes it's their first job. And, and so it's, it's neat to be able to, to be in an environment with those young millennials, their energy, their candor. I mean, I don't think I made eye contact with my CEO for the first two years that I worked. You know? I and mean, you probably know most of their names, if not all. I believe <laughs> well, you, it, Vern. You, you, you try, you know, mm-hmm. because, I mean, that's a matter of respect, right, that at least yeah. you know their names. So I'm... I tell you what, I'm motivated by these millennials, and and I think they get a bad rap where you know they're not committed, they're not loyal, they don't work hard. I, I really disagree. I mean, I see these young people come in and they're passionate, and they know they have an opportunity to develop software products that change the world, and mm. and uh, they work hard. And and I'll tell you what, they've got a better handle on work life balance certainly than I did when I was 20 years old. Talk to us about Appendix A. Well, in the book, Wired Differently, and Wired Differently was really meant to to kind of capture the stories of of NISC. I mean, with with so many new people, we'll hire about 120 people this year. So you have all these new people coming in. They don't know anything about the history. They don't know the stories, the stories that make up the legacy of the organization and, and, and some of the employees that have you know long since retired. So this book was meant to be a, a book that would be part of their orientation, part of their onboarding, help them understand the history of the organization. So we thought it was appropriate that in Appendix A of the book, we listed every single employee's name. And I can't tell you how powerful that was. The day that those, you know, the cases of those books arrived was kind of a big deal, and I I just kind of get a thrill up my spine when I say that Mm -hmm. right now. But so we open up the boxes, and and I start walking through our facilities and, and handing one to every employee and saying, you know, this is a big deal. This is about our organization. You're a part of this. And oh, by the way, your name is in Appendix A. And it's like everybody's going no to Appendix kidding. A. And that has to be powerful. Yeah. But, you know, the, the best thing about that book, besides being an onboarding tool for us and, and, and a way to help explain what servant leadership is, the best part of that book, and I really commend our board of directors for this because we went out on a limb a little bit and we said, you know, We've had this benevolence fund. It's kind of like the the pseudo united way within NISC mm-hmm. for, I mean, you go through that circle of life. You're single, you get married, you know, you have kids. And anyway, everyone goes through this circle of life and, and sometimes tragedy happens. Mm-hmm. It might be a natural disaster. It might be something financial. It might be something with your kids. It might be something with your health and you struggle through it. And, you know, we try to provide the medical care and all of that medical coverage, but there's always expenses outside of Mm -hmm. that. So how do you, how do you do, you know, what do you do when your house burns down? Like we had a situation. Well, how do you take care of those ancillary expenses? Well, about 20 years ago, we start this benevolence fund. Employees can contribute NISC matches. Hmm. Small group of of employees who distribute the funds anonymously. So we thought, wouldn't that be cool if we took the proceeds of Wired Differently? Because it started going way beyond our organization, and it's in the second printing, and it's on no kidding. Barnes and Noble and Amazon. Oh, and it's, good for you! It's a Kindle book, and it's uh, wow. it's on Audible.com. Clay Jenkinson, our friend Clay Jenkinson, yeah. read the book on oh, Audible. Oh, great! And so. Every penny, all the proceeds of this book go into this benevolence fund. Are you for the kidding employees. me? It's so cool. Oh, and and it's, it's quiet. It's, you know, almost below the radar screen. But it's, it's changing people's lives in our hmm. organization at a critical time. So wow. cool. Talk about servant leadership, huh? Mm-hmm. That, is, that is an incredible gift that you are giving to your team. Yeah. 
That's incredible. So, okay, we need to know more about this capstone project at the University of Mary. Well, it, it's kind of ironic that the whole seed of servant leadership had its roots at University mm-hmm. of Mary. And when we released Wired Differently and, um, you know, Monsignor and Dr. John Warford and others were looking at it and saying, this is kind of a confirmation of what we've been trying to teach our students. Hmm. Can, would you be willing to come in and put together a class that's kind of a capstone class for our seniors, our business students, that takes the academic theory of servant leadership and gives it you know, real life examples of what it's like to, to be in a servant leadership environment, in a business environment. Mm. So we took about 12 of our employees, you know, like our CFO taught the financial part, Carrie taught the people services, the HR part. Um, I taught a few parts, and, and so we brought different employees in to teach different segments mm-hmm. of this class for the seniors at the University of Mary. I hope it was effective for them. I know it was huge for us because mm. just having to prepare for that and, and allowing our employees, giving them the opportunity to be spokesmen for the book and for the organization and to tell their stories of what their experience has been was powerful, priceless, mm. as Visa would say. Priceless. Yeah. So if you were having a one-on-one with a young leader today or even a not-so-young leader, what's your key piece of advice for them? You know, just... For us. Just, right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, your, what, what you say has to mirror what you do. My father was my best mentor, and he would always say, the best sermon is a good example. Hmm. Yeah. The, the best, best sermon, sermon is, is a good, good example. example. <laughs> oh, that's so powerful. I love it. Oh, my gosh. You just never cease to amaze me. Thank you for you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for all that United Way does for our community. I'm just so grateful to, to be a small part mm. of it. Well, you're a big part in many different ways. And thank you to Lynn for everything that she does as well. Uh, thanks, Nicole Pesky, for arranging this incredible show. Just loved it. It's exciting. Yeah, we'll have to do it again soon. Yeah, yeah we will. Uh, anyone who wants to get more involved, go on to volunteerbizman.com. You can volunteer, raise your hand, be a part of the change, or you can give to our United Way campaign at msaunitedway.org. We are needing to raise $2.6 million this year to cover all of our community needs, and every single dollar helps. See you in two weeks.